Windows XP, Windows Update has stopped working. Here's the best, fastest, easiest way to update unofficial Service Pack 4. Ways to update include setting up your own server or connecting to third-party websites, but I think this unofficial SP4 is much better. You will need a flash drive at least 2 gigabytes, or burn a DVD to take the files to your computer. Recommend starting with a clean installation of Windows XP Service Pack 3 Home or Pro. Download link for the files will be in the video description. Here I've got it on a CD. So double click the no.net package, very important to use that one, I'll explain more why later. And you can see it's extracting here. Again, download link in the video description. So this has been extensively tested and I've personally read through over 50 pages and 2,000 forum posts to acquire some knowledge. Uh, I recommend going with do not archive there, especially if it's a clean install, you'll save some space. So the installation proceeds just like any other service pack. So this is an unofficial service pack for, for Windows XP. It includes every security update released up until April 8th, 2014. That's the official end of XP support, plus some additional tweaks. And again, I recommend installing the no.net version first. I'll explain why a little later in the video. And again, links to these files are available in the video description. Installation time depends on how fast your computer is. It's mostly affected by the speed of the hard drive, but also the CPU and the amount of RAM. Keep watching this video because there are more updates and tweaks to do after this base install. So you can see the installer is copying a bunch of files there. Wait for it to finish, and then you will want to reboot. The PC should reboot automatically, but if not, you will want to do it manually. And here we go, click finish. Again, if the PC doesn't reboot, do it manually, shutting down. And there's the Windows logo booting back up. It'll take a little bit longer than usual to reach the desktop. And you've got this please wait screen here, which this is normal. Also, you wanna click not right now on automatic updates and click next and Again, it'll take a little bit longer to reach the desktop here. We see the welcome screen. And I've sped this up, but your PC might take a minute. You might see the little hourglass flicker. Okay, we get to the desktop. We see a couple command prompts flash and we're booted up. I like to open task manager all the time on XP. So we'll open that. And now we'll go and do start control panel and add remove programs and there it is service pack 4 is installed uh, under add remove programs close everything here now we can also see some extras it's installed a bit locker program as well as an xps stopping here for an important message if you have an intel pentium 3 or amd f on xp cpu or older do not install this next update However, if you've got an Intel Pentium 4 or AMD Athlon 64 or newer, go ahead and install the next update. Why? These older CPUs don't support SSC2 and it's required. Okay, on to those extra updates. Again, I always open Task Manager, so let's look in the CD. Now this file, I'll put the link in the description, but it says EOS 3.1b or something to that effect. Here it's extracting. And so for those of you who don't know, Windows XP actually received updates for another five years until May of 2019. You used to be able to enable these in the registry with a key known as PauseReady. But again, Windows Update is broken now, so this is how you do it today. This also includes every hotfix ever released for Windows XP. Again, if you've got questions about Windows XP updates, please leave a comment because I've read through about 2,500 forum posts on this update pack. And it's finishing up here. This one installs a lot faster. It's almost done. You may have to reboot manually after installing this update. Okay, so it's finishing up and there we close Task Manager. Click Finish, we're rebooting. 
and there's the Windows XP logo. Log on screen. Again, time to reboot and install depends on how fast your PC is. Back at the desktop, and I always open Task Manager like usual. Okay, going into Control Panel, Add Remove Programs, and it's not there. This one does not appear in Add Remove Programs for whatever reason. All right, let's move on to the next part of this video. This is optional, but if you need the .NET framework for any apps, be prepared to wait. Notice here, we're starting at 5.30 p.m. I've opened up Windows Components Wizard, and I've checked all the .NET frameworks just uh, to test here. So we check them all, click Next, and click Next a few times. Now it's going to take a minute to finish the Add Remove Programs part. It's copying files and configuring the uh, .NET framework and everything. So this installs the .NET framework versions that you've selected, plus all security updates for that .NET framework version. I've increased the speed of the video, but we'll see how long this takes at the end of this part. So it's asking to reboot. We're going to go ahead and reboot. And Windows XP logo again. Okay, and the log on screen. Now, depending on how many .NET framework versions you installed or what versions you installed, Windows may stop here and ask you to reboot again. It's going to take a minute to reach the reboot prompt. And there it is, so click Yes to reboot. I did notice it flash a little error message there, but everything seems fine. Remember, it's going to take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes or longer, depending on the specs of your PC. It's almost done rebooting, and this is where it's just going to set for a minute with that .NET configuration box up at the uh, top left there. Mine took about 20 minutes. Yours might take less or more time. Okay, going into Add Remove Programs. And you can see the .NET frameworks there. I believe 2 is part of 3.5, so that's why only 2 show up. Here are some additional tweaks I made to XP. Uh, first of all, I don't recommend going online, but if you do, Windows Update Notifier will still bother you. We'll do a separate video, actually, about taking XP online, which, again, not really recommended. So open up Security Center here, and we'll turn off all three of those alerts, firewall, updates, and antivirus. Close that. Okay, and those. now I'm going for the Windows Update Alert, More Options, Turn Off and that'll get rid of the Windows Update Alert. We'll be looking at in a future video how to completely remove Windows Update components if I determine that's a good thing to do. Also, let's look at the disk space. About 6.5 gigs used. I think you could slim that down. Uh, I'll look into that too. So last two things we'll look at are System Restore Points. Go into Properties here, and we'll move that over, and go into System Restore tab. Uh, if you turn System Restore off, by checking that box, click Apply, and then click Yes. It's going to delete all your system restore points, and then apply it again to turn it back on, if you even want to have it on. Um, and then also we'll go into Start Menu, Accessories, System Tools, Defrag, and we'll maximize this. It's very important to defrag if you've got a hard drive, uh, and not recommended to defrag if you've got a solid state drive. But let's watch XP defrag. Again, not as good as the old Windows 9X defrag, but still kind of fun to watch uh, in Windows. 7, 8, or 10, you just get a window or a command prompt. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications.